Hi, I'm V. Neal, and I'm going to demonstrate how to apply a Prose transfer. We're going to start by prepping the transfer with a little Prose. So I'm going to prep two little scars. I'm going to prep a little one here, and I'm going to prep a big cut over here. And I just kind of dot it right on the appliance, take a little glue, spread it around, nice and thin, because you want it to dry quickly. And these are actually made out of the same material. So you're just sort of applying glue to glue. You want to get any excess off because you want it to dry as quickly as possible. Okay. So basically I prep this one and this one and they have just a little bit of glue on each one. And then we're going to blow dry them to make sure that they, it's all completely dry. transfers are on a acetate that has a little layer of silicone on each side so that it releases eventually. And then this is what we call a water side paper. You'll notice that on one half of the, one side of the paper has a shiny finish, on the other side it has a matte finish. And the reason for that is when this paper gets wet, it's going to enable the prosthetic to slide right off of it and we'll demonstrate how that works. We're going to cut this one little guy off of here. And we're going to take the shiny side of the paper and we're going to put the little prosthetic right on top of the shiny side. So now it's glued to this paper. Let's say he went through a windshield and we're going to say that this is an old cut. Now once you have your little prosthetic placed in place. You're going to take a warm wet paper towel. I like to use warm because it's a little more comfortable for your actor. And you're going to press this paper till it gets completely saturated with the water. Some people use powder puffs. I just prefer paper towels. And if it's wet enough, it should just slip right off, just like that. So now you have your little appliance on there. You can actually take your wet towel or whatever you're using and spread it out a little bit. This has a couple of rough edges on it, and we're going to take some 99% alcohol and blend it in. And you can do this with a brush or a Q-tip. I like to use brushes and we're just going to take it and blend it right off. And the brush I'm using is glue number one. cases, if you want this to stay on really well, you can encapsulate it with a little bit more glue. I'm going to paint this one like it's been healed up, and then we'll do it in reverse and we'll put, you know, blood on it, and etc. So next we're going to start coloring it with um, our ink palettes, and this one's Blood and Bruise. And I'll start by doing a little bit of something that appears to be like an old bruise on it. You can actually use the lid to as a uh, palette as well. So I'll start with just a little bit of yellowing around it so it looks like an old bruise. Come in with a little bit of the dried blood color which actually gives it like a little bit fleshier appearance. 
and these are activated with 99% alcohol. So you want to make sure you have that on hand. He's a little bit, ordinarily we will color this to match the skin tone. These were made for a lighter complected person, so we're going to have to color that, the old scar part of it a little bit darker to accommodate the skin tone. flesh tones and for this I'm going to use my pirate palette oh by the way I'm using texture number three to do this now I'm going to go in with my character brush so I can get a little bit more detailed a little closer in to knock down this paleness. We want a little bit of paleness because it gives us that raised look. That'll show through anyway with all the dark around it. <laughs> is so that it looks a little bit older because we're not going to have actual blood on it yet so we want it to appear like it's been there for a while now usually with a blow to the head like this there's going to be some bruising around the eye so I'm going to continue around the eye with my bruising I'm going to take a little blue down into this area right in here so he has a little bit of a black eye left over just a little bit of the um, lake color just to get the just a little bit of that pinky shade in there as well we're gonna go right in the crevice of this little cut and we're gonna put a little aged blood in there and that's gonna give it that almost fresh look and then I'm going to follow that up with a little bit of black to give it some depth cinematically you have a lot more dramatic look. Okay, so that's what it would look like if it was aged. 